In this tutorial, we will take a look at creating the vectors for the three-legged table assembly you see on the screen. The vectors used in this example were created in a previous project, which can be found through the related videos. And we'll start this tutorial by opening that particular file. So we go to File, Open. And we're going to take the three-legged table vector drawing CRV file and open that and we'll see the component vectors of the three-legged table. So as we've already checked these, we can move straight over to setting up the toolpaths. So if we head over to the toolpaths tab, and we're going to start by taking a look at the material setup. So for this, we're going to be using a three-quarter inch material. Our XY dating position will be in the lower left-hand corner. And given the fact that I'm not certain of the consistency of the thickness of the material I'm going to be using, I'm going to choose to zero off the machine bed as I'm not too sure of the exact thickness of the material. And moving on from that, we can check over our rapid and home positions, making sure obviously that the home position is above our rapid heights. So before we move on to creating toolpaths, let's have a look over the vectors on the screen to make sure we understand what they represent. Well, we have three leg vectors, which are shown here. And each of them have a slot in with a T-bone fillet at the bottom so that those three pieces will slot together. The tenons here, which also have the dog bone fillets in the corner, just as an allowance for them to slot together easier. The base and the top, which include the mortise slots, which the tenons will slot into. So these are the five individual parts which will come together to form the three-legged table. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to keep in mind when thinking about applying the toolpaths here. One of them is the fit, so we may need to look at applying an allowance when machining as we're looking for the tenons to fit inside the mortises and if they're the exact same dimensions they're going to be difficult to fit together smoothly but also we're going to need to think about the hold down method which we're going to use to fix this to the machine bed in this case i won't be using any tabs because i'm going to assume that uh, we're going to be using a, a vacuum bed or an alternative hold down method Okay, so now we can start considering how we're going to machine this. So the initial thought might be to profile all the individual vectors in one single toolpath. And to do that, I'd need to select all the individual vectors together. Now, there's three different ways that you can do that. You can either go to Edit, Selection, Select All Vectors, or alternatively, you can box pick over all the items. Or finally, you can click Control A to select all the vectors. Moving across now to select our type of toolpath under Toolpath Operations, we're going to choose the Profile Toolpath and we can start thinking about our cutting depths. Now, despite the fact that we've set our Z0 from the machine bed, this doesn't actually affect our cutting depth, so these will still be calculated from the material surface. So that means that our start depth of zero is correct. Our cut depth should be the full material thickness. If you don't know that, you can actually click Z equals, and it will display the material thickness for you in the cut depth. So moving down now, I'm just going to select my tool. And in this case, it's going to be a quarter inch end mill. And based on the current parameters of the tool, it's showing us that it would require eight passes. Now those parameters are set on the conservative side at the moment for hardwood. And I know that in this particular case, I can actually get away with a slightly lower pass depth. So with that, I'm going to go to the edit function here and just increase that pass depth from 0.1 to 0.2. And now I've okayed that, you'll see that the passes has dropped from eight to four. And if I take a close look at the passes now, you'll see that it's equally divided those passes over four, right up to that depth of 0.75. So it's not exceeded the set pass depth of 
But if I wanted to specify those pass depths of exactly 0.2, then I could come down here and select maintain exact tool pass depth and click set passes again. And now you'll see a 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 right up to the depth of 0.75 with a last pass of 0.15 inches but in this case we're quite happy to have an even pass depth so we can just set that back and okay out of the form and we're going to move down again now to our allowance offset which is actually very important in this case uh, because we've got our tenons that need to fit into the mortise slots and with an offset of zero then we'll have a direct meeting of those two surfaces together. So we're going to want to select an allowance offset of 20 thou either side, uh, just as an allowance to uh, make slotting these together much smoother. To do that, we just type in the allowance offset, minus 0 0.02. And looking at the rest of the form, uh, I'm not going to want to add tabs to this toolpath. Um, not going to think about ramps at this point. So we're just going to move down and we're going to name this cutout and click calculate. Okay, so immediately we have the toolpaths displayed on the screen and if we just tile this with a horizontal view, we can see the 2D view and the 3D view together. Now at this point, we'll just take a bit of time to go over some points of the 2D view. Um, so here we have the, the toolpath, you can see the toolpath direction. Uh, the start points of the vectors and if you come up here to the toggle toolpath 2d draw in style button and click that you can then see the solid view of the toolpath so we're actually drawing it on here and if we zoom in we can actually see the area where we've overcut so this is the 0 0.02 allowance uh, that we've included into the toolpath and that's happening on both the, the tenons here, and if we move across and just have a look, also on the mortises. So it's a 20 thou allowance either side, which should give us plenty of room when we're assembling this. So that was just to show how you can use the 2D view to draw the toolpath over the top, and it's a great way to check uh, that you've set the allowance correctly and that it's been applied to either side. And now we'll just maximize the 3D view and we can go ahead and preview that. I'll just make sure the speed's at maximum. Okay, so that's all looking absolutely fine, but there are a number of things that we need to consider before we can go ahead and create G-code. And the first area of concern that I can see, we we'll just switch back over to the 2D view, uh, is that we've actually got our top profile quite close to one of the tenons of the legs. So we might as well move that now so we rule out any issues further down the line with machining. Uh, so we can draw on the toolpath there. So you can see the gap in between the two. And I'll just switch off the solid view um, so you can see the toolpath direction. Um, so what I wanna do now is just select all the vectors which represent the part that I'm looking to move. And I'm just going to go into the transform mode by clicking on that. Come into the middle and select that and holding down the Alt key, I'm just going to move that horizontally. Okay, just widening the gap between the leg and the top. And you can see uh, that the toolpath is actually in a different position. And that's because I need to recalculate the toolpath for that to take effect. So to do that, I'm just gonna come back over to the toolpath, double click on that to open it and just click calculate. And you can see now that the simulation doesn't match the new toolpath. So I'm going to reset that now and preview the selected toolpath. And you can see now that we've allowed a much larger gap between the top and the leg. So that's the first problem solved. Uh, so we can move on to the second one, which might be more problematic. And that's with the, um, the slots for the mortises. So at the moment, we're profiling all the way through. And as you can see, there's loose waste material in the middle of the slots. And as we go down, they may become unstable and interfere with the tool and affect the finish. 
So we need to have a look really now at a better way of machining those. And one way I can think of that you can do this is to consider these instead as pockets and machine all this material away as you're moving down through the pocket so that we're not worried about it breaking away and causing an issue. So to look into this now, I'm just going to go back into the tiled view here and we're just going to look at these separately. So we've already got the cutout toolpath and what we now want to do is go ahead and create a separate toolpath just for the slots, a separate pocket toolpath. And I'm happy that I've got all my slots selected so I can come over to the pocket toolpath form here. Now our start depth is correct at zero. The cut depth we're going to want at the material thickness of 0.75. I'm going to select the same quarter inch end mill. And just once again check the uh, pass depth just to make sure it's at 0.2. And we need to apply a pocket allowance of negative 20 thou again. And in this case, it's going to be called slot. And then we can go ahead and calculate that toolpath. So everything looks a lot better now. If you zoom in, you can see uh, that these pocket regions are clearing that waste material away. So as the tool steps down, the full amount of material is going to be cleared out the mortise. But now effectively we've got a duplicate toolpath in this area because uh, we also have these slots included in the cutout toolpath. So if I come back over to cutout, just double click on that to open the form. And now I'm just going to go back in and just select the five outer vectors that we require. And then I'm going to recalculate that. So now the slots have not been included in the recalculation. I'm just going to want to re-preview that again. So I'm just going to reset the preview and we'll view this in full screen 3D. And then preview all toolpaths. And as you can see, if I just click on this, we've got the separate profiles in cutout and the slots, the pockets in the, uh, in the slots toolpath. Now this brings to light another issue, which is the ordering of the toolpaths. So currently the slots are being cut after the profiles, whereas really they should be the other way around. So to swap these round, all I need to do is just move this up the tree. So the second of the two toolpaths, if I just click the up arrow here, that will just bump that up the list. So that when we go to write this out as a single G-code file, as we're using the same tool, the slots will be cut first and then the cutout will be cut after. So just bear in mind that the order of the toolpaths in this list will affect the machine. now that we are happy well. with our toolpaths, we can now go ahead and save them to output to our CNC machine. To learn how to do this, please refer to the dedicated saving toolpath guide tutorial that you can find in the related video section to this video. Now, this example has just been an overview of the profile toolpath, but if you wanted to take a more in-depth look, you can maybe look at adding tabs or maybe changing the order or other parameters which affect the profile toolpath. Please refer to the profile toolpaths guide, which is one of the linked videos to this presentation. So the last thing to do here is to save the project file. So I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and I'm going to call this three-legged table underscore 2D underscore toolpaths.crv, and we'll save that. And that's all safely saved away for outputting at a later point.